uh, this is another part of it I think that we should keep in mind with Bitcoin. Have this very have this at your disposal, I think, in other words. So let's watch this video. It's only 22 seconds long. It's uh, It looks like a British documentary of some sort. They're looking at all the gold bars at a bank. So watch this video, think about it, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay, Sarah, I mean, how much gold is here? This is one of nine gold vaults that we have here at the bank. Um, there's about 400,000 gold bars stored here and collectively they're worth about 250 billion pounds something like that what i know it's a lot isn't it okay sarah i mean how much gold is here this is one of nine gold vaults that we have here at the bank um there's about 400,000 gold bars stored here and collectively they're worth about 250 billion pounds something like that what i know it's a lot isn't it okay so that oh, am i no i'm good so let's just take a look at the uh headline on that so the headline from bitcoin news says this versus storing 12 words in your head and that caught my eye this morning because I watched the video. They said that there's four vaults like that, $230 billion worth of gold held there at the bank. So I, when I was watching that video, a lot of things were going through. Yeah, Daddy-O says the other, oh, there's, so there's nine there, nine vaults, sorry. The other eight are probably empty. Well, that's one part of it. Because if you think about what's happening here, banks are storing gold. They're trying to store value instead of in their dollar. They're trying to store their value in gold. And I mean, for the last, we just heard Saifedean say that for the last thousand years, gold has been the hardest money because it's the hardest asset to make. It's the most scarce until Bitcoin. So that's how we, that, that's what we used to have to do is, is hold gold bars in a bank and think about everything. People worry about the, the environmental aspects of Bitcoin. But think about how much energy and human resources and money and everything it takes to secure that gold there. Think about it. So you'd be paying the storage. You, you need a huge building, a huge storage facility to store that gold. You need security at the bank. You need security transporting those gold bars around. The fees to send those, let's say you wanted to do a transaction with somebody else, another bank, another country. The fees to send gold are extremely, extremely expensive, costly. It cost me like $25 to send one of these hats to someone else, and it weighs a pound. How to audit it? How do you audit that? How, every time you send a gold bar, some, there's somebody down there marking it on a piece of paper. Like Who audits that? How can you trust the people that they aren't just putting a gold bar in their pocket there? Transporting it. How, if you wanted to send one of those racks of gold to somebody, how do you do it? With a boat? <laughs> like, how do you send it to other parts of the world if you want to transact with them? And keep an inventory too. Like, think about counting all those gold bars and their value and the volatility of that. I mean, it, gold itself isn't very volatile, but it still is. And you have to keep track of the inventory. You have to make sure the amount of gold bars are there. Employees aren't stealing it. You think about that system and how archaic that sounds. For storing value when we have the, now the ability to to do that without any of that without the storage without the security guards without the boats to transport it without the 100 employees required to audit that inventory we don't need any of that you just need to protect your 12 words so we're, we're kind of going through this weird transition right now this part of history right now is a very weird time where you still see things like this, where people are storing billions of dollars or billions of value in basements like that, in gold bars. When you have the ability to just put it on a digital ledger, decentralized digital ledger. And uh, what do we have for time here? How far do I get into this? <laughs> 
And that's the other part too. Bitcoin Buddha says fake gold bars come from China. Yeah. How, how do we know that all of those gold bars are legitimate, that they're real, that there haven't been any cast iron put in the middle of those gold bars? How do you audit all that? You can't fake a Bitcoin. So if you needed any more reason to be bullish on Bitcoin, I figured I'd share that with you. The old way versus the new way of storing wealth. Uh, what else? I, I don't know what that last comment there says on Zaptos stream. I'm sorry, I can't. It says Idris Elba's fee for the video. Stacker. Stacker's over in Zaptos stream. I'm not sure what that means. So anyways, that's uh, that's gold versus Bitcoin in visual sight. You can see there how much it requires, how much is required to keep that gold safe compared to Bitcoin. So the last part here, this was from Bitcoin News as well, except I didn't uh, take a screenshot of it, I guess. So the big piece of news that happened over the weekend in the last week that's really been driving the downward movement of, of Bitcoin, apparently, is what they're blaming it on, but Germany. So Germany is officially out of Bitcoin. They sold all of their 40 or 50,000 Bitcoin, it's all gone. And the funny thing is, is that you can see it. This you can see this whole thing. So we just looked at like the gold bars there in somebody's basement. We have to trust that they have that Bitcoin there. That is real Bitcoin, or with gold. Sorry, we have to trust that that's real gold, real gold bars. The amount that they say is there, we have to trust that. We have to trust them with that. With Bitcoin, you don't need that. All you need to do is look at the blockchain. You can see any address. You can see the amount of Bitcoin they have, amount of Bitcoin they had, and amount of Bitcoin that they've bought and sold so we can see that the german government has sold all of their bitcoin it's gone basically all went to blackrock and that's that's kind of the whole transition we're seeing here happen is that the the countries are losing power that's kind of the trend here big picture here countries are losing their power and that power is shifting to the blackrocks the big corporations of the world nvidia like think about the co the corporations who are holding this whole system together it's not the governments. The governments are in so much debt between their actual debt and their unfunded pensions and liabilities. The countries have hardly any power anymore. And I think people are really failing to grasp that in a lot of ways, but we're gonna see this whole thing play out. Germany is out of Bitcoin now. And somebody, once the wallet was drained to zero, you could see some transactions going there. So people started sending Bitcoin to Germany which I think is just as stupid. If you're donating your hard-earned Bitcoin to Germany, you're you're part of the problem there. But somebody inscribed uh, text with with uh, the Bitcoin they sent, and they said, "Have fun staying poor." Or it was uh, HFSP, which stands for "Have fun staying poor, German government." <clears throat> so that's uh, I wanted to give a shout out to whoever did that. That's good stuff. But uh, as my path to fire says. No money, no power. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing all this capital, all this wealth, all this money flow from the governments through their gold bars, through their Bitcoin, through everything. It's flowing into these huge corporations now, which is a problem for sure. And there's a lot of people ringing the bell saying that this is a problem that's happening right now. But there's nothing that we can do about it other than continue on in Bitcoin and try to get as much Bitcoin as we can, the little guy get it off the exchanges, get it out of their uh, realm and take self-custody of it, take that power away from them. 